Okay, good evening. Welcome to the stream this evening. We are going to do some more work on this uh, elephant. Hopefully you've got a better view of it today. Mm. Windows changing around me. Um, so, what I'm going to be doing is going from black to light, or dark to light, fading up before we then do some more work around here uh, uh, well just to put grass in basically For an evening of colouring in, I'm afraid, but uh, it is an important part. I think I need more heat now on this. So I'm trying out the um, camera in a different position to see if I can get on with it. Uh, in this position. Come on. Because it's now right in front of me, so you've got a very similar uh, view to what I have. So we're going to see if that uh, that works particularly well. And quite how the light uh, is uh, reacting to this um, because now that uh, you're looking at the same angle as I am hopefully neither of us are going to get glare off the light and I need to get more, get back used to. Hmm. Not sure whether I want that propped up or not for the moment, so we'll just put it down here. And see how that goes. That's a bit better. side here I'm getting little it, it hmm, the tools catching on that side for some reason don't quite understand what it is it's just not quite it's obviously somehow the way I'm using it perhaps, but it's catching a little bit on that side. I don't seem to be being very smooth for some reason. Now it's not fantastic, again, I'm lucky, it's not fantastically a problem at this stage because this is grassland. 
So being grassland it's going to have all sorts of textures, uh, bits of grass and other things, uh, you know, um, hoof marks, all sorts of stuff in the uh, in the ground. So you know, the, the, the fact that it's not a smooth texture, the fact that there's little uh, darker areas, vertical lines, all this sort of stuff isn't really a problem. It just adds to the to the texture. Quite frankly I'd prefer to put it in myself rather than have it go in accidentally. Um, but almost certainly that's just a case of my practice really I guess. More than anything else. Max out the cake. Good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Nice to see you again. Thank you very much for dropping in. And how are you doing today? I'm experimenting here with a new camera uh, angle. So you might like to give me <laughs> an idea of what, what you think about the camera angle. Uh, the reason for doing this, apart from the fact is you're seeing it at the same angle as I am basically now because the camera's right next to me, is hopefully you're not going to get as much glare off the uh, off the pyrography piece and, and we'll be able to see it a little bit better. A little bit frustrating with this. Um, I'm learning, still learning the tools. I still am not. One of the things that I'm kind of really got to practice a lot at is to get really smooth areas so I don't introduce little sort of dark bits accidentally. Um, it's not a problem on this particular piece, but I'd love to be able to do it. So it's a bit frustrating when you get them uh, by accident. I'm doing very, very well, thank you very much, uh, Max Out The Cake. Enjoying what I'm doing. Uh, am I doing this for fun or is it work-wise or something else? Um, it's for fun. It's a hobby, is uh, pyrography. It would be nice to be able to do it as a job, but to be honest, I don't think that's likely to happen for quite a while, uh, if ever, but uh, it certainly would be nice. Maybe when I retire, um, it can then become uh, a job. I don't know, we shall have to see. But uh, that's a few years away yet, so... Um, It'd be really nice if uh, if uh, Twitch were to partner me and tens of thousands of people were to watch me, then it might become a job sooner than ever. Have I ever burnt myself working with this? No, I, actually, I haven't, no. Um, I do tend to somewhat be respectful of the tool. You know, that's a hot end. Um, if you're working with this a long time, this the barrel sometimes warms up. Uh, and it's you know, after a couple of hours, three hours, it can get a little bit uncomfortable. Um, but then it's just a short break and it cools down again. The only time it, you really feel a, the, the heat uh, to the point of not burning yourself. But is if I'm holding it like that, so it's, a, it's very much then like I'm holding my um, fingers over a candle. And I'm about the same distance away from a candle you get about the same level of heat so as you can imagine it sort of gets really uncomfortable uh, and it's just a case of moving away 
Um, but no, I've never actually burnt myself, I'm, I'm glad to say, because it would hurt, of course. What do I do for a job then? I work for a telecommunications company and I deal with uh, numbers, data analysis um, and things like that. So um, nothing, well I suppose it's still a creative thing, uh, creating solutions to things, but it's, um, it's nothing really like pyrography or anything like that, or any of the other art forms that I do. What I'm tending to do here is create a gradient from dark to the lightest bit just up there. And a fairly fairly gradual one if I can manage it. Um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> uh, it, it, it is rather good. Um, I can't remember if I've asked you, uh, uh, Max Out the Cake, do, uh, do you do anything uh, like this as a as a hobby or a job? Well, obviously you don't have to answer if you don't want, um, but uh, just interested. Feel free to um, remind me you said that, but you've told me before if you have. Unfortunately, my memory is a little bit of a sieve. Um, yeah, what I'm trying okay what I'm trying to do is just get used to this tool I took last night off in terms of not doing pyrography I was rather tired last night so I didn't want to ruin this piece so I did something else on stream last night but um I'm getting a little bit impatient with this. I need to slow down. If I slow down, I can do the colour in one go. If I try and do it too quickly, I end up making multiple passes and then it, it takes longer to do. But um, I'm feeling a little bit impatient. That's partly actually due to the weather here in the UK. It's extremely warm. And for some reason, that always makes me rush doing things like this. When it, when it's nice and cool, I'm a somewhat more relaxed. Yeah, it's um, and mm, you're right. It, it is harder to do dark to light when it, when I am working so light, um, but. Um, what I'm going going to be doing is is I'll, I'll go so far, then I'll start back here and add another layer of colour or, or darken the colour of the top. Um, it can be quite difficult to get a graduation um, sometimes, and uh, I'm just sort of judging the the colour range that I want. I mean, I I have done some a little bit there, for example, which might or may not show up on, str on the stream. I think you can probably just see that there's something there which is kind of what I wanted so I, I just need to establish the range that I'm going to work over. Um, you're still in school but you draw ma mainly with pencil and paper. Ah cool. Thank you very much with regard to that. Um, I hope it does turn to keep being a beautiful piece of art. <laughs> Just a bit. Uh, have you ever uh, thought about uh, streaming? Uh, you uh, you doing drawing? Uh, max out the cake, or I guess uh, you know, uh, playing games, perhaps if that's also uh, something that you uh, do. Let's. It's. Um, I'm so used to using, for example, an airbrush, or a pencil, for that matter, and to do to do artwork. 
that I'm kind of treating this like a pencil as well. So you can see me being quite fast, and I, and and it just doesn't, yeah, it doesn't happen that fast. I can turn the heat right up, and it will happen that, that fast. But then, uh, I may have mentioned before, it can be quite hard to control it because you then have to be fast. Otherwise, you get um, really dark marks, which may not be what was intended. Um, but uh, so what I have to do is to slow down and uh, move fairly, you know, move fairly slowly. I'm probably still moving too fast at the moment, um, and I sort of get to get back into that relaxed uh, frame of mind where I can do this quite, uh, quite gently. Are you just streaming? Let me have stream for a while. Ah, oh, cool. So I'll make that 57 or something. <laughs> I shall keep an eye out for if you do it, uh, do it again. Because if you, uh, certainly if you're streaming drawing, um, pencil and paper drawing, I'm quite happy to uh, to watch somebody do that. It's I do enjoy watching people in uh, in creative doing um, physical art. I don't mind watching people do electronic art, but um, I do have a. I tend to enjoy watching people who actually are doing something physically with a pencil, paper, paintbrush, uh, carving knife, whatever you know. Physically, uh, just interests me a little bit more. It may be daft because I am a. I am a, an electronic artist as well. I that's how I do. Ah, oh, that's not physical. That sounds daft, doesn't it? But if I want to draw a picture, I'll draw it. I'll draw it on the computer rather than drawing it on pencil and paper myself. So it's a little bit odd, uh, I guess. Is uh, is is my sort of um, approach. You know, I watch other people doing physical art, and then I'll do it electronically myself. But mm. artists are weird people. Okay, so we're going to slow down. Actually, I mean, once I start to slow down, then I, then I can work out. Why well, so I start to slow down? I can then do things like turn the heat up a little bit, so that I can speed up, which is kind of a contradiction to what I've just said about doing it slowly. But um, once once you sort of get the hang of going, oh, I've got the hang of going slowly. Um, I can th I can then adjust the heat a lot better. Um, mm, it's um, it it is a challenge. Is that uh, max out the cake is streaming when nobody's on, but it's kind of a chicken and egg thing. If you don't stream, nobody will come on, and until you do stream, you know you, you don't get anybody. But uh, it's. Uh, mm, yeah, it takes time. I'm I'm trying to think now. I probably spent about uh, well, I I probably spent about four or five days. Now I don't know how long you've been streaming for. I probably spent about four or five days before I even got uh, the first person said anything to me. I'm guessing a few people probably dropped in and disappeared out. But uh, it, uh, it you've kind of got to just ignore it uh, and ignore the fact that. Um, Nobody's, at, you know, potentially that nobody's watching. Um, 
sometimes you can't tell especially if uh, somebody's uh, not logged in then they don't show up even though they could be watching you main thing is just to uh, just carry on I don't know I don't know if it's something that you do but a lot of people if they think nobody's watching um, are, are silent with whatever they're doing and they don't treat the they don't treat the stream as though there is somebody there and um, that can be hard to watch um, I mean there are some streamers that literally just you know, do whatever they're doing and they're just streaming it they're not uh, they're not interacting at all but um, I seem to find that the um, streamers that are, you know are interacting with with the people that may be watching them uh, even when there's one or two are a lot more interesting to watch so that's why probably you found when you popped into the chat I don't think there was anybody actually watching me at the time when you popped in max out the cake but you probably found I was talking to myself um, And then I'll go quiet. <laughs> but if you have the patience to uh, to stream for hours, then um, I'll try and watch you. Yeah, unfortunately, that's um, that does happen. Max out the cake. It's uh, it's a stereotype of uh, of Twitch, I'm afraid. Is that um, young women do uh, do get more viewers, no matter what they do. Don't let it bother you though. Um, ultimately what happens is um, people will get bored and then uh, and move on to ultimately to people who are actually producing quality um, content so I'm not sure there'll be many people sticking around here but <laughs> uh, Lazar good evening welcome to the chat and thank you very much uh, Lazar You have to think of it as um, max out the cake. They will eventually, once they get once they once they get over uh, sort of ogling uh, females, then um, then they will uh, they will move on. But it, uh, I, I admit, it takes a while, and there's there's always more moving into their place. But as um, as people. Uh, mature and watch more of Twitch and things like that. They 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 do m graduate towards uh, the streamers that are producing quality content, whether it's creative or whether it's games, things like that. Then uh, it it it, um, it does happen, but it does take a while. So don't let it, don't let that sort of thing discourage you at all. You know, if you you know you've got good content, then um, you know, that's the main thing. And I know it is just to get, it's easy, I know it's easy to say as well, but uh, it does happen. I mean, you know, yeah. You do indeed. <laughs> um, I mean, look at it. Look at it this way, Max out the cake. You could have gone and watched one of those attractive girls streaming. Um, 
and uh, but you haven't. You've come here, and I don't think I'm an attractive girl. <laughs> so maybe the art's not bad. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. We've got Leazar here as well, you know. Although he's probably watching two streams at the same time. Don't know, Leazar, are you watching an attractive girl stream as well? Oh, and in the interest of fairness, I must say that there are some attractive girls. Oh, just get, well, let's just say there are some girls out there. Um, that are really good at their art as well. So, you know, it's I don't want to uh, you know, make out that um, just because somebody's attractive, they're, they're not good at art. That's that's not the uh, not the case. Or, or whatever the art is, whether it's art art or whether it's gaming art or, you know, um, playing games. Of course, the other way to look at it as well is... Um, Everybody has to. Uh, everybody has to to learn and practice art in order to get better. So, if they may not be good to start with, then maybe they'll get better over time. And uh, some people like uh, watching that development. Um, there are actually four people, but they don't really talk. Sorry, I'm not quite sure I understand that uh, comment. Okay. Um, so do I, to be honest. I mean, um, you can obviously you can look at my follower list, uh, following list. Um, I think well. There are, there's a there's a few gamers in there, uh, which mainly well I think all of them are, um, are gamers that I used to watch before I discovered Creative, uh, and then once I did co um, discover Creative, I, I I don't think I've followed any more gamers since. In fact, most of the gamers I don't don't watch anymore. Um, even though they're they're excellent gamers, I just don't have the time to do it. And uh, if I'm if I'm sort of do have time to watch somebody streaming, I have um, I tend to look through creative first to see if there's anything interesting to watch before I then go and, uh, and and look at one of the people gaming. Max out the cake. I thought you were already following, but um, thank you um, very much for doing that. I do appreciate that. Yes, Cannon Bear. Um, I do. Uh, I've followed him for a little while now. Uh, Cannon Bear also does uh, pyrography. He he work he do, his work is in a slightly different style to mine. He he does um. More of a cartoon, well, as you possibly know, more of a cartoon style. Uh, last time I saw him doing pyrography, though, he's doing a, he had a lovely piece of wood. Not quite sure what the wood is, but it had like a lovely purple. I think it was a purple heart in the middle. Looked like a um, a roaring plasma jet, uh, and he was doing some beautiful uh, artwork around it, sort of uh, as though it was a, an open interdimensional portal type thing and ghosts and evil things were coming through <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> for, yeah fair enough <laughs> thank you very much you don't you don't need to do it just because I followed you, though. That's okay. <laughs> um, but yes, it, it was uh, it was a really nice piece of wood, and and, and I remember him uh, yes, having. A, I'll actually have to catch up with him because uh, um, I've not had chance to watch many of his streams just recently. He's been doing a lot of drawing, I notice. I think 
Um, but I'll have to catch up with him and see how that piece is going because it's it's been a while since I uh, had a chat with him. But it was quite a very nice piece. He was going to do he was going to he was thinking of lighting it from behind as well, so and, and thinning some of the areas of wood down so that it was translucent. Uh, and it uh, and, and then mounting it in like a light box, which sounded absolutely fantastic. So, Laser, how are you doing this evening as well? Um, hmm. <laughs> there are times when I wish the uh, stream delay was a little bit less than it is. Well, actually, the, most of the time I wish it was a lot less than it is, but <laughs> it can occasionally be quite difficult to hold a conversation. Yeah, especially when you've got a, a memory like mine is where I've got to then think back about uh, 30 seconds. Have. I ought to maybe have like a little tape going in the tape. God blind me, that's how old I am, isn't it? Um, a little sort of MP3 going in the background that sort of says, Zara can slow down, Zara can slow down. <laughs> ah, dear. Voodoo, Voodoo Ray Ray, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Uh, no, look, looking's fine. Um, this is a technique you weren't aware of. This is pyrography. A literal translation of um, pyrography. It's, it's it's got a it's a Greek rooted word, but literally it means uh, fire writing. But I tend to um, uh, well, I would I would argue its translation is better described as being uh, painting with heat. So what, what I'm doing here is I'm using an electrically heated tool. Uh, which is probably in the region of about 150, 200 degrees. Although I've never measured it, to be honest. Uh, and when you apply that to the wood, what it's kind of doing is it's kind of drawing the, the sap or the resin out of the wood and uh, essentially cooking it, uh, which then is, it just leaves it on the, uh, on the surface. But when you, when you cook the sap, it turns a brown colour. A um, bit like how maple syrup's made, if you're familiar with that, uh, and then that uh, that then is, forms the colour that you're seeing here on the on the wood. The more heat I apply, i.e., I can either turn heat up or leave it in one place longer. Uh, the darker it becomes. Now, um, I'm. This style of art is is best described as photorealism. It's nowhere near like a photograph, but the um, it kind of distinguishes it from other art forms. It's it's intended to look like real life. Obviously, the better the artist, the more real like and more photographic it becomes. But you then get uh, you get different uh, different styles. So you get like um, we were talking about Cannon Bear earlier, who does like a, a cartoon style. So that will be like a black outline around things, like you would see on a either on a cartoon or a comic book with the areas inside coloured. Um, and then you get um, uh, a style which is more like a stamp or black and white, pure black and white. So line work uh, or stamp work uh, to produce uh, to produce images, all of which can uh, can produce some really nice, uh, really nice pictures. Um, uh, 
what type of wood is usually used or can any be worked with um any any wood can be worked with to be honest um you get better certain woods are better than others one one of the one of the criteria is the lighter the wood generally speaking the more range of shades you have available so if i did this on ebony ebony is is almost black and i would kind of get i've only got one color available to me which is black um, and it's really hard to get darker than ebony so it, it's it's not particularly a successful wood to do it on um, there are uh, you know this this wood is called birch it's a plywood but that's just the construction of the panel the birch is is quite a light wood um, poplar is a is a is a light wood as well and they being very light you've got more range to go um, let me give you an example if i don't knock things off this is a practice piece that i was been working on if you see the difference between this wood and this wood there's I, this is already darker so if i sort of look try and sort of compare it with my background uh, we, we're kind of at this sort of level of background color here already so anything lighter than this I can't do so I can't represent this color for example um, because I've only got you know, I've already got half as dark as, as wood might might go it doesn't present too much of a problem it just makes it harder to represent multiple shades so um, but so different woods you know, the lightness helps a lot and gives you more more contrast and more shades to work with um, the other characteristic that helps a lot is to have uh, all wood all wood or all natural wood has rings somewhere in it growth rings from the uh, from the tree and, and the therefore the grain of the wood um, wood that where those are not fantastically visible as you can see in here you can there is one here but you can hardly see it um, that helps because it's consistent all the way across the wood um, what can happen and it happens a little bit on this wood is when you go over that ring that will actually go slightly darker than what's around it so because it's only slightly darker I can adjust for that if it went really darker it would become a problem or you have to incorporate it into the art form that you're doing so um, you know there are some woods that are better um, pine yeah pine pine is pine's not bad but uh, pine has a characteristic where the the ring is quite hard and does color quite quickly the stuff that's between the rings the, the sort of the what would have been the bark i guess but the growth uh, with pine when you apply heat it very very quickly shrinks away from you and you end up creating um artwork that's got waves in it uh, and getting the color same between the ring and the bit between is actually quite difficult on pine so birch or, or um uh poplar is perhaps the bed ba uh, basswood gets used a, a lot as well which is also known as European lime wood, which is a good carving wood. Um, but you don't often get, get that in thin sheets. I mean, this is, so as you can see, is only, it's only about four, three, four millimeters thick. Now this is a manufactured wood, it's plywood, uh, which at uh, this thin, uh, this thickness is, the fact it's plywood actually is very good. Uh, a solid sheet of, birch this thick would warp, would warp with this much pyrography applied to it uh, birch birch uh, sorry plywood stabilizes that a heck of a lot um, but if you're doing thick uh, thick wood or you know like a carving which might you might apply pyrography to then birch wood is an excellent wood as well because it's very light and it's got a you know fairly consistent uh, grain structure um yeah <laughs> yeah max out the cake that's right 
lighter wood doesn't always work well though. So it really depends on that consistency it but there again an awkward wood to work with like pine can be with sufficient practice you can deal with it so you know it's 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 really down to the skill of the artist um it can be uh voodoo ray ray to um you yeah, know challenging medium you can you can do pyrography and other things as well though i mean it doesn't necessarily have to be wood um it can for example be leather you can do it on paper or card generally the thicker the better actually with paper or card it, it, it works better the thicker it is and and thick card actually is it's kind of the best of both worlds in some ways because it doesn't have a grain it's a manufactured product obviously it doesn't have a have a grain doesn't have rings so you tend to get consistent coloring across it you just have to work with a lot lower temperatures because it, it does go brown very much quicker um, you can also okay max out the cake not a problem um, you can also do it on, on things like goods um, and leather uh, it can be done on as well you can actually also do it on bone uh, animal bone uh, you can apply uh, pyrography to as well to uh, in the past it was done to uh, to ivory of course that's now illegal uh, any uh, working with ivory at all is is illegal these days so you don't you know you, you, there's no more new uh, work done on uh, done on ivory but uh, so there's a fair range of stuff that you can do it on um, potentially you can do it on cotton as well um, because again it's it's a fiber um, a natural fiber like that um, it will take color probably not as much of a range of colors but it can be done as well it just adds more challenge uh, theme hospital if I didn't say hello welcome to the studio this evening I'm just reading back and uh, Max there, uh, Max out the cake, fire writing. Yeah, well, uh, the um, pyro means fire and graphy means writing. So pyrography uh, is, uh, is fire writing. Um, the texture that's left behind wouldn't make this suitable for a screen print. I assume that you mean by that could you apply ink to this and then use this as as um, as the uh, the plate on which you put paper on top of it uh, no it, it's not well uh, this working like this no you couldn't uh, there is not a lot of textural textural difference in terms of, of depth between uh, any of these areas here uh, at all so that there's no there's no real place that would hold a reservoir of ink in order to uh, to apply it you know to use this as a, as a printing plate uh, you you could turn this tool or tools like this because this is just one that they plug in so uh, for example a tool like a tool like this one which is a writing tip uh, you can apply quite a bit of heat to this and, and then you can you can cut into the surface basically it will get quite deep uh, so you could you 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 could sort of do a um, a level of uh, what like woodcut basically for woodcut printing using a pyrographic tool uh, I suspect you'd probably have to clean out the um, the, the cut areas because they would be carbonized uh, just like charcoal you know it, it's burnt wood uh, at that point or, or as close to it as as you can get with pyrography it would be like a charcoal so you probably want to clean them out before you applied ink and the other thing of course is being wood well, I suppose if you what I'm doing in this area here is by if you apply very light pyrography it actually closes up the pores of the wood so it wouldn't absorb the ink um, quite as much this is quite shiny so if I cut into this uh, and then 
went over the the surface to make it sort of nice and shiny I'm sure you could probably use it like a wood cut um, you you almost certainly have to use cross hatching style techniques I guess to uh, to, to create shade rather than um, being able to sort of like create uh, shallow and dark areas and I'm not sure that so shallow and deep areas I'm not sure that would work too well I'm not familiar actually with creating sort of woodcuts or or, or uh, printing plates enough to be able to uh, you know say quite what's possible but uh, you certainly can do some cutting work with that you sometimes do it uh, with goads for example you can do not like a, well cut you know you do cutouts like you would do with a pumpkin for example but i wouldn't use pyrography on a pumpkin i suspect it would smell terribly <laughs> but because uh, there's just so much liquid in there it, it sort of wouldn't work on that but a gourd which is dry uh, you could probably cut uh, out using uh, using a, a pyrographic tool as well uh, and you can get um knives for example i've got one just tucked uh just i'm just going to try and get this out without knocking everything one of my spare tools here let me just put that one down which is hot so i don't uh, i don't accidentally catch myself but you can for this this is um a knife it's a relatively sharp edge. I'm not about to cut myself. It's not razor sharp, but it, um, when you heat this up, it will cut wood quite easily. Uh, and you can use that, for example, to cut plastic. So um, these sorts of tools are quite useful if you do any uh, stenciling uh, or uh, airbrushing. You can do it. You can create. You can create, uh, you know, stencils or in or cutouts in mylar. Or thin plastic sheets using you know, tools like this, um, and then you know paint through the stencil or you know use it. I don't know for you know, like, what am I trying to think of? You know things like uh, for pencil for outlining you know, like circles and squares and things like that where you run a pencil around. For the life of me, I can't remember what you call the things. Um, and what else? Oh, there's, there's a fair bit you can do with pyro pyrography. Um, I guess it, I guess it, you could. I, I wouldn't really describe it as that. It's really. I mean, once you start with you know with with something like this, you're not really. You, you, there is a level of sculpting, I suppose. It'd be interesting, maybe I'll try it one of these days, to heat this up and take a block of wood and just see quite how much sculpting you could do with it. Um, I'm guessing though you'd create a lot of smoke and uh, you'd have a quite a messy thing because where, where you've run this it would be black and uh, you'd get um, charcoal basically all over your hands and everything else. So it might uh, might not be so pleasant. Um, it can be quite difficult to control as well. I, one of my very first pyrographic pieces that I did was a portrait, and I was trying to get a, a black leather jacket, and I um, shall I say I wasn't very experienced. So what I did is try to get a really black image using uh, not this tool but another one that's similar turned right up and the wood was just shrinking away from me it was really hard to control and um, it created a very nice texture i must admit but um, it didn't look very it, the texture was nice but it didn't look very good <laughs> which is a bit of a weird way of saying it okay well thanks very much for that uh, voodoo ray ray Right, I'm going back to this now. So we'll do a little bit more on here. It's 
some of these little streaks like you see here for example and there's another one developing here is where the 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 ring is and as I mentioned it take, it can take the color very it can color very quickly in those areas and that's what's happened there so what I have to do if I don't want that to remain is I have to go both sides of it like this try not to get too close to it because I'll just make it darker if I'm not careful and uh, just darken around it in this case I only need to do one side until it becomes less noticeable or you know if that's the color I want until I match match around it sort of like that Akinis good evening welcome to the studio this evening nice to see you again how are you doing sir madam sir sorry Akinis I can't remember whether I call you madam or sir uh, I apologize <laughs> Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Kenneth, for uh, uh, sorting me out there. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, it's a, you know, there's a. I have a uh, not very good memory for certain things, and uh, some well, sometimes names are not necessarily reflective of. Uh, whether somebody sir or madam and it's just kind of a, a reflex action with me to in some ways to say you know hello sir or, or good evening um, in that way so I hope I don't ever offend anybody by calling them incorrectly Okay, this tip is getting a little bit dirty. Uh, when I try and get a little bit of paper, everything falls on the floor. There we go. It was a little bit dirty. What sometimes happens is you get a build up of the material on the bottom of the tool because it's sitting there a long time it gradually carbonizes and goes uh, it gets quite uh, rough uh, and you can scratch the work sometimes um, because it, it's quite rough it's quite hard it's stuck to the bottom and, and if you're doing this you scratch if you're not careful uh, so that's you just saw me there of course get the piece of paper out and basically just wipe the bottom of the tool off which removes that residue it also actually helps the heat transfer so it is a good thing to do to uh, occasionally just wipe the bottom of the tool um, and then uh, you know it, it, the tool will then make contact with the uh, the wood a lot easier and uh, the color is brought out of the wood a lot easier a lot of easiers in that sentence. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> so I was just laughing. Uh, one of uh, we have three cats here. Some of you on the stream will have seen one or uh, uh, one or other of them. Uh, one of them has just come into the studio, but he's gone under my other desk at the other end of the room, uh, and he's, it looks like he's gone and found himself a hidey place hidden behind the desk. Um, but he sort of came in really quietly, and he he, he was, I won't say he was stalking in, but he was doing it, uh, keeping an eye out for the cats. So he's he's looking for a place where the other cats haven't discovered yet, where he can. Uh, where he can snooze without being disturbed. It just made me laugh the way he was creeping in. Oh, that's unfortunate, Akenis. Um, the uh, the oh, you, you were having problems with the with heat, weren't you, on your machine? Or oh, appeared to be heat or something. Um, did you get any further in trying to find that? Well, I guess you haven't, I guess, if it's still crashing, but uh, have you had any luck in sort of doing any diagnostics on it? So if you see me looking that way, I'm, I've got a, I've got a screen there as well as one in front of me, and I've just, um, I've got a couple of, uh, a couple of chat windows up, and that one's slightly easier for me to read on that side because of my glasses. Um, Twitch is useless. Why is Twitch useless? Uh, theme hospital. Exactly fifteen minutes. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Well, sixteen minutes according to the uh, according to the chat uh, uh, clock. <laughs> um, from your last message to that one, sixteen minutes uh, apparently. But certainly a good estimate. Okay, I'm chilling out a bit now, more because I'm slowing down. Um, at the start of this stream, I was racing this pen backwards and forwards and not making a great deal of uh, impact. Um, either I'm getting used to it, or I'm just chilling out and slowing down. It certainly helps to be somewhat uh, chilled out and philosophical doing uh, doing this. It's, uh, it goes a lot faster when you go slower. Which may sound like a contradiction in terms, but uh, the faster you go, the less heat you apply to any one particular area. So the faster, the slower you go, the more heat. So you get colour quicker if you slow down. Okay, now that I'm getting used to this, I can probably stand to turn the heat up a little bit more. Uh, oh yeah, see? Well, that's what it says. And 
nice uh, nice group of people of course which is the main thing it doesn't doesn't matter how many people there are it's uh, it's the quality of the people so I'd much rather have the um, so the quality of the and fun of the people who are watching the stream at the moment than uh, than sort of three times as many that are not as nice. slowing down which is a good thing so once I've applied color all the way to the end of this what I'm going to do is then come back and use um, a scalpel or a, another pointy object to actually scratch the grass into this because the grass like grass blades or, or stalks of grass would appear slightly lighter than the ground around them so what I can do instead of trying to put them in now and, and pyrograph around them uh, what I can do is scratch through this area it'll then show very much lighter um, they'll, look, they'll look white uh, because of the darkness around them so what I'll then do is is apply another layer of pyrography over the top which will give them a little bit of colour and then they'll look a bit like uh, sort of dried out grass on the savannah could I get your name uh, my name is Eric Anot. max out the cake that's kind of what I'm just known as all over the place um, so okay yeah now I don't tend to use my um, given name on the internet at all so everywhere I am it's uh, it's Aragon Art so it uh, is just kind of stuck um, and deft as, it, deft as it may seem I am kind of just a little bit private about uh, some things like that <laughs> I'm streaming on the internet, you're watching me, but you know. Okay. Yeah, you see, uh, these days people seem, seem to be doing it a lot actually. A lot more is, you know, where they have uh, a name, uh, shall we say an internet name as opposed to a given name. Um, a lot of people are, uh, are using that sort of name in, in real life. Um, and I think it, it kind of comes because they've chosen it themselves more than more than they've you know than it was chosen by the parents. And you kind of, I, I suppose, legally you can go go through and change your name if you want, but most people don't. But um, when you've got uh, yeah, you know, when you go onto the internet, you a lot of people pick this pick a name and they use it everywhere, and it becomes their their name almost. And uh, you can almost feel irate sometimes when you go onto a, a new system or a new site and you try and register and you can't because somebody's using your name. And <laughs> uh, I kind of find kind of found that with mine. Um, Zaragan. Zaragan comes from it. It. it um, I, my name, if you like, started out as Zaragan. 
um, uh, from a for a particular reason. Uh, it's it's uh, it's the name of um, an album by uh, an artist, sorry, an artist, by a music artist uh, called John Miles, of which um, I w he, uh, he's a sort of personal friend, if you like. And the name is just it's it's a nice, interesting name, and I've I've used it for years. But um, so of a few other people, and so I started coming across a lot of systems where I couldn't actually register. Uh, register that and because um, I did artwork it just naturally had art stuck on the end of it almost and uh, and that's kind of what I get known by all over the place these days so almost always if you see Zaragoza out somewhere it'll be me. Greya good evening welcome to the studio this evening and of course people still abbreviate it to Zaragoza sometimes. And now it's got to the point where um, you know, I just I just carry on with because I am I just carry on using it. Don't think I think because I think quite a few of my friends also know me as that anyway. They they'll know my full name, but they they call me uh, call me Zaragon as well. But in their case, they've just they've just picked it up. <laughs> they haven't they haven't been asked to use it that way. It's, mm. Okay, I'm getting. Uh, I'll, I'll need to extend this black up, but that sort of probably wants to be a little bit darker because we're uh, we're only about halfway to uh, to that color. But uh, let's go. Let's see if I can go back shade darker. As mentioned before, I'm not too bothered about uh, uneven. Whilst I'm trying to get an even tone, uh, so I'm using this as practice, and um, I'm not bothered by having by not having an uneven tone here because this is meant to be grassland. Um, it's not an it's not by any shape of the imagination. The grassland isn't an even tone. Uh, sort of, you know, the marks and the um, the colour variations is all part of a natural landscape. So, it, it you know, it's it's helping. It helps the representation. So as you, oh hello AD Fall Guy, good evening, welcome to the studio this evening. Uh, so Max out the cake, as you've um, you read the, the stuff that's below, what do you think about the the, the text that there, that's there? Too much? Too, uh, too little? Too much explanation? Um, just interested in what you uh, you think about it, or anybody else actually who's uh, who's read it? If you haven't read it, any particular um, you know, reason why you um, you haven't? You know, you've taken a look at it and gone, yeah, I'll leave that till later, or oh, never at all.
don't you just hate it when um... okay no that's a valid i was about to say don't you just hate it when uh, when streamers ask for um uh, market research <laughs> immediately that's a valid sort of thing uh, max there is a lot um a lot there to uh to say i will uh, you know take that on board i'll have a look and see if it because if i can uh, be a little bit more succinct it is uh, yeah i do i do agree it's a little bit of a wall of text so it, it's it's a little bit hard i guess be, for for me in that what i wanted to do was just give some information about all the things that i do on stream because it you know i think there's i think there's four things listed there three or four things I actually do five um, okay that's fair enough um, when uh, the jewelry uh, when the jewelry um, at the moment that tends to be sort of um, if I do a stream on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon um, I'll do that but um, I, I really enjoy that it's chain, it's uh, chain mail stuff um, so I've got well it's this stuff you can see at the back here um, which is, reminds me that they're, they're, my, they're my wife's bracelets so I must give them back um, <laughs> there you go indeed um, AD is the guy I watched AD do it and um, then uh, uh, it was so fascinating I wanted to fascinating I wanted to have a go myself and so I tried it out um, so AD does uh, stream that on a regular basis each day of the week so Monday to Friday between about 1 and 3 p.m. UK time yep and it's uh, I, I it's really I really enjoy doing it. it's really fun to do uh, it can be extremely frustrating and uh, whilst Eddie makes it uh, look very easy and I hope I do now um, it's uh, it can be really quite challenging especially yeah uh, because uh, I, I, I that I tried this one uh, the other day um, it took me about 20 minutes to get that just to get that started just to work out how to start that uh, once I got the hang of it um, it got a bit easier <laughs> but uh, that's uh, that was that well, this is called four in one half Persian and uh, yeah it's um, AD certainly makes it look a heck of a lot easier than it actually is in practice Um, did I have no um, you were doing you're doing Byzantine around a ring um, no you did make it look quite easy um, I understood that sort of getting the ring in place I didn't see the start but I understand getting the silver ring in place was a little bit sort of uh, challenging and fiddling but yeah you I mean that's nothing compared with how long it took to um, to start that four in one you were watching me yesterday trying to trying to do that and if, uh is it that one yeah um this was my first attempt at that one i've just shown you and that's a completely different weave i got it completely wrong um this is a triple spiral or a three ring spiral i'm not quite sure how you describe it but it's sort of three spirals uh closely closely stacked together um that that was meant to be what i just had in my hand <laughs> it's nothing like but uh yeah um okay that must have been the because I, I think i joined about 30 minutes into your stream um how much does that cost what um something like uh, some well this sort of section too uh, i i don't know there's um It is more of an expert in in terms of that one, but uh, I I haven't actually costed up uh, that. I was just practicing yesterday, so hmm. 
I don't know. There's pro it's probably um, somewhere around twenty pounds worth of work to you know to to buy something um, uh, uh, like a bracelet in that uh, in, in that particular weave. Depending uh, exactly on the length that's um, that's used. Yep, there you go. I wasn't a bad guess, was it? No, I don't mind. I mean, I I I would hope to sell some of this because it, I enjoy doing it. But as Eddie knows, it's not a cheap thing to do, and it's not something I can keep doing. If uh, uh, plus, you can only give so much jewelry to my wife. So, but yeah, there you go. No problem. Yep, yeah, and you've got more skill than I have, so. Uh, what's that going to be about? 27 euros worth, something like that, um, AD? I don't, uh, I'm assuming Slovenia is um, in euros, but I don't actually know. I'll go back to doing this whilst. Uh, Uh, mentioned cats around the place uh, with uh, those people that don't know don't have cats you might not know but uh, they cats do shed hair a little I mean humans do as well um, but the cat hairs tend to be really fine hairs and um, they occasionally you'll get some just land um, on the work here and I just caught one and uh, heated it up if there's a not very nice smell uh, with pyrography it's catching hairs don't burn hairs don't burn your own hair never mind um, cat hairs um, it just does not smell very nice which is why you saw me wrinkling my face incidentally um, people talking about sort of burning things earlier this is this is tissue paper it's sorry, it's a uh, kitchen paper it's fairly thin paper but you can apply pyrography uh, to, uh, to to even thin paper this is this is very thin paper which is why it, it sort of went brown really quickly but uh, so you can apply pyrography just to paper and um, it's just a characteristic of the tool that made that go brown really quickly but as you can see I'm I'm hardly uh, colouring this paper at the moment and I can just go over it and I can apply more colour so it will eventually go um, brown so you can do this on paper and this is relatively cheap paper um, a good paper to practice on is very heavy weight uh, wallpaper lining paper um, yeah well sort of a bit of smoke that uh, you know the smell mainly but a little bit because it if you hit a hair it does uh, it does generate a puff of smoke as well which isn't particularly pleasant 28 euros, that's not a bad guess. Then 27, it's close. And as Eddie will, for, will um, point out, that's uh, plus position packing. <laughs> Uh, okay, I was working over here. I do tend to flip, flit around a piece sometimes, uh, and it's uh, partly just stops you getting bored with one area. But the the other thing is, um, if you, if you work in one area quite a bit, and and you'll see 
the electronic artists do it a similar thing quite a, quite often. They'll flip the image left to right. Some of them will even flip it upside down, but uh, mostly they flip it left to right. And the reason they do that, and the reason why I flip about, is or flit about, is you you don't see mistakes until you look at it from a different perspective. Now, if they flip it, and so what's on the right was on the left, m mistakes are or not mistakes, but things that are not right will jump out at you. Um, if I go and work on something else and then come back. I see what I'm looking at with new eyes, you know, fresh eyes, and and I can see things that aren't quite right. So I do, uh, I do hop about sometimes, and that's that's part of the reason for it. Or occasionally I just go, oh, that's not quite right, and I'll just um, like there, for example, I've got a slight light mark, so I'll just do that and hide it. You're 14 year old and you're broke. Oh, a lot of the 14 uh, year olds that I um, have seen around seem to have more money than I do. The 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 you, know, you see them buying, uh, you know, well in in the game shops around where uh, I am, for example, in in the UK, you see them going out and buying two or three 40 pound, uh, you know, Xbox games and things like that. So. <laughs> You must be fairly, or are you broke because you've you've just bought lots of Xbox games? <laughs> ah dear, eight dollars. <laughs> Actually, I'm kind of thinking that's yeah, probably more than I've got in my wallet. <laughs> Mind you, I'm thinking at uh, at fourteen. Uh, fourteen. Yeah, I started work when I was fourteen. <coughs> Um, uh, and I've yeah, been working ever since. Well, you just spent quite a bit yesterday on um, airbrush supplies, didn't you, Eddie Fall Guy? Um, I try not to use a debit card or a credit card for that matter, Graya, uh, these days. It's. Uh, I'm. Part of that reason is I'm hoping we'll have a, um, a new uh, we'll have a new studio later this year, and that's going to cost me a lot of money. So I'm saving everything I can. 
You started at 13 cleaning in a butcher shop. Yeah, I started in a garden centre uh, at 14. Um, I did it legally as well. So I applied for a work permit and I actually had, um, Eddie will maybe understand this, but I actually had a, a national insurance and tax code when I was 14. Um, which um, then proved interesting when I um, got my first job after leaving school because I started, uh, the firm I started with uh, just didn't know how to handle the fact that I already knew what my national insurance code was and my tax code, uh, tax, had a tax code because there were, they used to sort of people coming from school didn't have those things and they had to ap apply for them and do all the work that's necessary and I already had it. It really confused things. I actually overpaid tax for, it took about a year to sort out, so I had to pay emergency tax for a year, which is top rate tax in the UK, uh, or it was at the time. So I got a really nice bonus after about 18 months. <laughs> uh, yeah, 40 quid, yeah. 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 Well, even with credit cards, one of the things I really I don't do is I don't uh, I pay off credit cards, so I don't spend it unless I've got it. Um, I've, it it's something I shall I say I learned forty, thirty, forty years ago um, was um, basically if I haven't got it, don't spend it. Uh, if I want something. I'll save up for it and you know it's yes I potentially could get things you know get a loan or something these days but it's um, you know I, I much prefer to uh, to say okay I've saved that money now I'll go spend it um, you have a small enterprise that you operate okay um, theme what's the uh, what's the enterprise uh, max out the cake um, just go around to local firms and ask them for one uh, max out the cake effectively that's what I did uh, my second job was working in a supermarket I just walked into the supermarket one night asked to see the manager and said do you have any jobs part-time uh, I can work these hours and he said as it happens yes <laughs> uh, and that's how I got my second job Okay, <laughs> I like the qualification, Grier. Yet, yeah, that's true. Uh, if you if you feel uh, like it, Matt. I mean, uh, my impression um, of working from a young age and people that I know have worked from a young age um seem to have a better understanding of the workplace they get on a lot better in the workplace um, and uh, certainly some employers uh, quite like the fact that you've taken that initiative shall we say so it can be a good thing even if it is in you know, uh, either a family firm or, or some place where a relative works that's fine indeed yeah thanks that's true Server rental and hosting services. Wow. So if I ever want to rent a server, I know where to come, Theme Hospital. All you need to do then, Max, is to get them to pay you. Gets you, uh, get, I, I, the thing I think it does is, um, is get you used to um, having to work for, to receive money, if you see what I mean. Um, you, know, you, you do work and then you, they, you get a, a wage slip or a wage packet at the end of the week or the month and uh, you, you, you've, you know you've earned the money. As opposed to it just being given to you and things like that.
don't know if um, AD agrees having worked in a butcher shop from 13 it's one way of learning where your food comes from uh, AD isn't it and I assume you still like bacon <laughs> I know, um, well, I used to know a, uh, a person that, that had worked in a butcher's shop when they were young. And um, by the time they finished working there, they were a vegetarian. I know my wife had, had, had very much liked to be a vegetarian and she didn't like bacon quite so much and um, and meat. In fact, um, she, ref she refuses to believe bacon comes from an animal. No, uh, that's been a little bit unfair. She knows it comes from an animal, but she prefers not to think about it when she has bacon. Uh, Oh, I agree. If I want something, I like to have it now, you know. And it's uh, th there's always a very much sort of nice, uh, nice thing to be able to do. But I've um, the way I handle it that that these days is um, I just save an amount of money each week or each month, and that's that's a pot of money. So if I want something now, I can spend it from that pot of money. Um, but then I can't spend it on something else um, and I do have savings I've put stuff away so things like when I bought the microphone um, I didn't quite well you know I, I bought it from those savings but then I have to pay it back into those savings because they're savings so that's about the only way I learn loan myself money if you like is, is from savings but I don't um, I will overspend those savings and I, I usually spend a lot of time thinking about whether I want to do that or not. Um, that's a that's a really great ambition, Grier. Really great Im ambition to be able to do that. Um, it will be challenging. It will be challenging. Uh, to do that sort of thing it's um, you've got you've got the pervert well you've got the you've got the trade-off between price and cost so it's uh, time and cost you either have to get um, fast or you have to charge a lot um, ultimately and that's that's um, uh, an interesting dilemma to do to do that to, to earn enough to uh, to live off of but if you can do it all power to you it, it, it's great to be able to do something that you love doing as a job uh, and 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 to be able to live from it the only caution i'd say is when you're doing something that you love doing as a hobby uh, as a job you then have to do it as opposed to a hobby you can go you know what i've had enough i'm not doing any more today or a week or when it's a job you can't so it can put you off doing something that you love doing um if uh, it, when you're doing it as a job so you, you you know kind of you have to think about that ultimately if you get the opportunity to do it as a job then you've got to think about that and, and think whether that's something you really want to do <laughs> uh, no we don't eat it we don't eat it a, a lot but uh, uh here but we do like do like it <laughs> mm. 
Um, actually, I, I tend to prefer sausage. <laughs> um, if we go out and have, we've got a, a sandwich shop near us that makes hot sandwiches. And occasionally we'll go out at lunchtime to have have those. And um, I tend to have I tend to have I tend to prefer sausage in sandwiches to bacon. But uh, a bacon sandwich or a bacon butty, as it's called in Yorkshire, is uh, a very nice sandwich. Yeah, that's kind of the problem of uh, with with uh, you know like this for example. Um, this has taken something like about 14 hours and it's not finished uh, and at, at, at a uh, commercial level uh, you know t okay I could get faster at doing it uh, and the more practice I do I would get faster at doing it but even at a commercial level um, you know the cost of this piece of work um, is well well is is well over 150 pounds uh, at, at a, a rate that i would have to uh, charge somebody to be able to live on doing things like this so it's it's a really uh, a really difficult uh, thing to do um you know to, to be able to translate that in, into a living Uh, it's interesting because I was watching um, it's interesting it's, I found something interesting you wouldn't know about it until I finished speaking um, I was watching um, there's an artist uh, a coral painter master called Aaron Rutten and he does YouTube videos and interestingly he was um, and it wasn't him no, it was somebody else whose names escaped me. It was, it was another YouTuber I follow anyway. Um, he did... Um, they were talking about um, selling art. You know, uh, it's, it's, uh, the, the guy is... Um, it's a South African guy. And he does... Paintbrush type art. Oil painting, uh, acrylic painting and um he, he also does online courses and things like that and, and, and a video he put out just recently was about selling your art as um you know commercially selling your art and he's it was a a teaser video if you like for a, a course that he's putting together which is how to sell your art you know, you know spend a you know two or three hundred dollars with me and i'll tell you how to sell your art type of thing but this the teaser thing was kind of like a a free lesson and um, what he was talking about there is um, uh, one of the interesting things he was talking about there is don't underprice so you know think about well he, he was you know he was also talking about don't, don't overprice the market as well but um, so it was kind of things like uh, you know if you've just started art, the right time to sell your art is as soon as you've started. Because um, if you are even half decent, a lot of people will see what you do as really good art, even though you as an artist think, you know what, uh, an elephant could do better. But other people don't see it the way you do. And uh, one of the things we're talking about is, you know, when you are first starting out what you can do is you 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 know you effectively have to recognize that you can't charge thousands of dollars for a canvas you know you have to um, not necessarily take a lot you know not take a loss on something but you know um, not expect to pay yourself sort of three hundred dollars an hour you know you might have to pay yourself two dollars an hour um, and therefore, you know, you can't live on it to start with. But it, the more you sell, the more you sell. And it starts to, um, you, ultimately, if you're, uh, you're progressing your art, you can snowball. And as you get better, you can start to charge more for what you do. And people will accept that because you're getting better. So it was an interesting thing to uh, to watch and uh, what have you. Um, 
Sorry, I'm now catching a bit up on, on chat. Uh, yeah, it, um, that's what it, it kind of was. Um, you know, there will always be people willing to pay what you ask, but um, it may take a while to find those people. Uh, and it may not happen uh, very frequently, but uh, you know, it's it's not being discouraged, not to be discouraged by it. Yeah. Okay. Well, you you've seen Gray. You've seen how quick I am at carving. <laughs> I, uh, I, I I mean that that um, that dragon was quite relatively speaking uh, for me, shall we say, at least quite a complex uh, piece to do, and it was really deep relief carving. If I was to do something fairly shallow, um, you know, like the. Uh, Yeah, like the rose here, for example, uh, I wouldn't do it on ash. Uh, you know, if you do it, if I was doing this on basswood, relatively shallow like this, I could probably do a, a rose in in probably about four hours. Um, it, as long as I was, you know, very shallow shallow relief carving, and therefore it becomes, you know, potentially becomes more commercial, and that isn't actually a bad image, relatively speaking, to uh, to do. Um, and it, it, you know, for things like that, for, for me carving, for example, if I started doing things like that, I could get uh, somewhat more commercial. And um, I mean, like with the pyrography, one of the things when I finish this, one of the things I want to do is, is just try doing something the other way around. I've got a piece of um, wood here. It's a door hanger. It's a, it hangs over a door. You see them in hotels, you know, do not disturb or whatever. Um, what I want to do is on one stream, which is about two hours, generally speaking, I want to see if I can do something on here on both sides. Now, by time boxing like that, I've got to pick an image or something to do on here, which is um, relatively simple to do. Maybe only sort of two or three shades. It may be cartoon style. It may not, but I don't know yet. But do something on both sides. Possibly, you know, as it's a door hanger, uh, possibly something. Um, I've got two ways of doing it. I can either do it on one side, you know, the typical you know, Fred's room type thing, which may be, I don't know, put a, a train on it or a cottage on it or something like that. Or I can do the, you know, I'm awake, I'm asleep type of uh, idea um, and see if I can do it, in, do something in two hours. So they do something like that in two hours. This then starts to become, uh, well, apart from the fact it's an interesting challenge, it becomes viable as um, as a commercial thing. Not still not something that you can live on, uh, but it becomes commercial for enough for people to see the value of whatever you might charge for it. Because two hours of work is a bit different to fourteen hours. <laughs> um, but you, yeah, they, whilst the, hopefully the quality would uh, be just as good, the the image itself would be a lot more simplistic. So you're trading off, you know, a, lo a lot of shading work, a lot of, um, uh, you know, I would say photorealism work. It, it and I, I hesitate to that, but it's it's things like uh, you know, on a, if you t if you look at somebody, they don't have a black outline around them. Uh, and if you look at a photograph, there isn't a black line around around people. But quite often with pyrography, what people will do is outline and then fill in. Um, that I call a cartoon style, and the here, this sort of thing, I call I, I call it photorealism uh, to distinguish it more than more than actually. I'm not wanting to imply it's as good as a photograph. But then you know, that's that's another way of looking at it. But uh, yeah, chip carving, of course, is can. But it's there's quite a lot to do. I mean, it's um, you haven't got a lot of room to make mistakes either. You know, it's um, to be honest. I've, obviously, I've been watching that guy, uh, Grier, and to, I cringe a little bit. I mean, I know I I know the techniques he's using to hold a knife, and. Um, 
Yeah, I, 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 when I'm carving using a knife or a chisel, uh, especially the knife, I'm using similar sort of techniques. So I know I'm not going to cut myself. I know he's not going to cut himself, but boy, does it look like he's going to. <laughs> um, and I know those knives are sharp, but I, well, I will say I, I've used the knives I've got, and I think you've seen you've seen the two on basswood, and um, I've used chisels on basswood, and it strikes me is to do the chip carving, you guys are using a heck of a lot of pressure to get the knife to go that deep. Now, I, I guess you're only going about half a centimetre or a centimetre deep, but, um, you know, I'm, I cringe. <laughs> uh, Yep, yeah, that's the, uh, so just reading backwards, um, max out the kit. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the tips is don't point out mistakes to, to people you're showing your um, uh, artwork to. Let them tell you about mistakes if they see them, because most of the time they won't. Uh, the, I think you've seen this one, but I'll just illustrate the same thing. Um, I've got a piece of pyrography here okay now um, I I'm going to do exactly what I say you shouldn't do but there's a mistake in that a really big mistake and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you what it is but if you don't know what it is you probably won't see it and you probably well I'd hope you think that's not a bad image it's quite quite good but the mistake is the propellers are stopped. And if this is flying, um, you wouldn't be able to see the propellers. They'd be spinning so fast. But I've made the mistake of stopping them because that's if you take a video and you stop a video, you'll see the propellers. It's a video artifact. In fact, it's an artifact also of taking a photograph. You can stop the propellers as well with a photograph if, if your shutter speed is fast enough. So the fact that you can see the propellers on here is a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. I, they shouldn't just not be visible, or at the very least, there'd be a grey disc. Um, but there again, being the artist, I can get away with this because I can say, you know what? This thing's just coming in for a landing. It's coming in for a crash landing. Uh, why? Because it's got no main, the main wheels aren't down. The propellers are stopped. Got to land quickly. <laughs> so it's coming in for a crash landing. <laughs> I can get away with it. Uh, but, um, you know, that's pointing out a mistake that you probably wouldn't have seen if I hadn't said so. Oh, dear. Oh, sorry, Max, if you're going, uh, yeah, if you've got, if you've already gone, then uh, good luck to on your, uh, if you've already gone, there's no point in me saying it, but if you haven't, good luck on your test and uh, uh, see you again later. Cheers. Um, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, it strikes me with chip carving, you've got to do it, you've got to do it in what, it, it strikes me as the um, thing the way you've got to, You've got to cut the chip in one go. I know you can clean up the edges a little bit afterwards, but it's not the sort of thing. I know, and I know you said you can do like one and then go a deeper one, but it, it, it's kind of a a one shot type thing, isn't it? You you sort of if you really mess it up, you, there's not a lot you can do about it. Um, so I mean that uh, it, it's you know that that's daunting to me in the in in one way. You know, just uh, just in that respect. Um. Uh, if Gry would like to post the link to the, I mean they're on YouTube, AD, but uh, Gry uh, dropped me a link of a guy, which is which t is is teaching it, but you get to see the bits as well and uh, I think some of his later videos also is doing so great if you want to um, and you have you have access to that uh, that link that you uh, posted for me then um, I'm quite happy for you to post that in uh, in the chat and Eddie it'll give someone for Eddie to look at 
uh, at some point when he's uh, when he's got the time. Yeah, the bit I I found really fascinating, Greg, is you know when he was uh, well, you know when you you um, I can't remember which way it is, but you you you, you do you do the triangles back to back so it, it's the long sides are, are back to each other and so you, you're cutting that way and you cut that way uh i was w watching the guy it's amazing how he, i can understand him cutting one quite easily you know the the triangle but when it comes to the other because he's then cutting along the very top of a slope and it's a his control is amazing to be able to cut exactly along that that line i sort of sort of can understand being able to do it when it's a pencil mark but then when when you are literally going across the top of the other it, it strikes me as ex extreme it needs an extremely good level of skill to be able to do it straight across the very top of that uh, you know top of the line um and i was fascinated watching him just just doing that they you know it, it's it's one of those things i guess if somebody who doesn't know what's involved watches somebody do that it's kind of like oh you know it's cut, just cutting stuff out but once you've got an understanding of carving just something that looks so simple like that just trying to hold a straight line um to me is a is a is quite um a high level of skill because you know i've I try and do things like that with a chisel or with a uh, even with a, a knife when I've I've tried doing certain things, and it is so hard to keep a knife or a chisel in a straight line because the the grain of the wood is always trying to push you off somewhere, uh, and it's amazing. Thanks, Greer, for posting that. Yeah, he's he's got uh, the the inverse order. If you go, if you go, if you when you watch, uh, if you want to see the very start, you'll have to go back quite a few um, uh, videos, Eddie, because he's got a lot. But um, I've started watching from his very first ones coming forward. So he's he's starting as though he's teaching. Well, he is teaching people, uh, and you get to see. I think you. Unless you just want to watch somebody chip carve, if you actually want to understand it, it's good to go back to his uh, his very first ones. They're they're only about uh, some of the early ones, about five minutes a video, so it's just covering one concept, which is really uh, really good. You can do it in in bite sized pieces. Uh, yeah. I should get on with some, uh, rather than talking, I should get on with some pyrography, shouldn't I? You guys should remind me occasionally when I start, uh, when I start talking sometimes I forget to, uh, to look down and actually do some work. another thing that can make it quite hard commercially uh, um, is to uh, uh, to be talking whilst you're trying to do it on a stream you spend more time talking than you do um, do working I think if I was to do a commission whilst uh, while streaming, I'd have to sort of uh, lower the hourly rate quite a bit, <laughs> just to cover for the uh, the periods of uh, inactivity.
Let's have a drink. <laughs> yeah. That's something I kind of agree with, AD here, you know. Pyrography, chain mail, punch craft, uh, scraper board. <laughs> uh, what's my fifth one? Carving. <laughs> uh, dear. Uh, no, I, I, I was about to say I'm probably lucky in that I've got some knives I could use, but I could, they're, they're the wrong. I might get away with a little bit, but it's it, the one, the. Um, my main bulk knife is um, is the wrong shape. It's close, but not uh, not quite good enough to do uh, to do chip carving. I could do some with it, I think, but uh, I'd probably want to get a, a more appropriately shaped uh, knife to do it. Well, having said which, Edie, they're not Edie. They're not. Um, I have to say they're not that bad, probably about fifteen pounds for a good knife. Th then you have to buy the basswood as well and uh, then that adds up. I think what I'd be afraid of, and that is, um, you know, getting something like a really nice wooden, you know, basswood box, and then uh, and then making a mess of it. <laughs> oh dear. Eddie, the number of times I have a, a, a cold glass of juice or water and it sits there where, well it's just off the screen, but it sits there next to next to the face cam. Um, and like this one, it sat there for most of the stream and I keep thinking, I must have a drink of that. Uh, and it sat, and I, I still down. Yeah. Well, at least finish the, the three boats off, no matter uh, what, you know. And I was about to say, they're probably worth more finish, but that may not be the, the case these days. Some people like doing their own, so... It's funny though, um, you, you I don't know if the intent was there that you might actually uh, uh, pass them on uh, to uh, to other worthy owners. But it's surprising how with RC I think you come back to it. When I was uh, uh, when I was young, I started well, probably when I was about four, yeah, at least fourteen. I started remote control aircraft, RC aircraft, and uh, I did that for quite a few years until I bought my first house and I couldn't afford to keep keep doing it, uh, and so I, I stopped. But kind of never, never really stopped. If you know what I mean, it was just a very very long pause. And you know, I've now got the helicopters and um. The uh, you know the articulated trucks and the tank and things like that. So it kind of coming back to it. I'm not sure. I I don't really want to join the club again these days. Uh, so I probably won't fly aircraft unless I can persuade uh, somebody with a big field to let me uh, have it to myself. But um, I think RC is kind of one of those things that you um, 
you don't ever really leave you just um, put it to one side for a while oh I kind of know Gryer but you know what I mean it, it, the first time you do a you, know, you might have practiced loads and loads and loads but the, the first time you do a box <laughs> or something that's actually worth a lot of money relative you know, relatively speaking and uh, until that's I think you've got to probably get to or, or go in with the mindset well you know this is a practice I know I'm going to spend money on this and it's going to be practice and it's not going to be you know I might make mistakes on it but that's okay being able to do that is quite a mindset and I'm not sure I can do that yet you know I I still save materials for something that's worthy of being done and yet if I don't use it I won't practice and if I don't practice I'm not going to get good enough to do something worthy of being done so it's it's um it's a mindset to get over and if you've done it well you know great um <laughs> what well, actually building or, or trying to run it to Haiti <laughs> uh, It would be one way of outlining outlining the um, the uh, the figures, Eddie, <laughs> rather than a uh, mind you. It would probably make the paint smell a bit. Um, you probably have to do the outlining first. Are you masking them or are you doing them freehand, by the way? Oh, trying to build it, yeah. Yep, yeah, some people have... Um, I hesitate, I, I always hesitate to say patience because I'm not quite sure it is, but... Um, Uh, some people have uh, less of a, an ability to stay with doing something um, than uh, than others. Yeah, we didn't do pyrography at school. Um, I um, I became aware of pyrography because I did airbrushing and I was looking up. Um, YouTube videos of airbrushing and you know how YouTube does other things you might be interested in and pyrography came up and I watched a few of those and you know it, it became interesting that's how carving came as well same thing yeah oh, well I'd um, Actually, I, I probably could freehand it myself, but uh, it, uh, as a, an outline. But um, uh, one of the things I was going to say is, is quite like what I'd be quite likely to do is um, uh, well, I wouldn't use tape, but I, I've got um, some masking, um, and I'd, I'd, I'd probably mask it if I wanted a real um, sharp edge. But you can, uh, oh, well, yeah, because the masking I use clear, it's easy enough to put put it over and then and then just go around with a knife and and do that if I wanted a really sharp edge. Um, be careful as well, I guess. The sharpie is um, is it solvent based? You might want to just uh, on a scrap piece of paper try uh, just lay a coat of paint down, leave it to uh, dry, you know, overnight so it, it cross links properly, and then try try running your sharpie over the top of it uh, just to see whether it has any impact. 
I can't remember if the sharp is a, a, a solvent or water based. If the water based, you may um, you may start to muddy your sharpie marker and start to drag colour uh, into it, and so you start getting instead of black, you'll get a mix of colour. Um, if you're getting anything like that, typically one of the things. Well, one, one of the ways around it is to lay a coat of clear coat over the top and then put your sharpie on and then clear coat again over the top of that because then the clear coat isolates things. Um, or sometimes what you can get if is Createx. Createx do a... You can just lay down a clear acrylic barrier as well sometimes. Um, just, yeah, I'm trying to think what, 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 create it, what it is in Createx. Uh, but it, but effectively it's transparent medium, and you can just lay that down. And then if your sharpie, if your water-based marker, uh, is tends to to try to rehydrate the paint, it's rehydrating the clear, um, uh, the transparent uh, medium, and it doesn't doesn't mix with the with the sharpie in, in the felt pen tip. Yeah, um, Buick, Jean Buick, B, uh, B U I C K, uh, and it is yeah. I, I've watched watched her. She's absolute. Uh, it, the the YouTube who posts it, I think, is a daughter. I think it's M M Micken or or something like Micken who posts it. But if you if you look for Jean Buick, it, but yeah, she's absolutely amazing uh, artist. Unfortunately, mo most of the time you see uh, her working, she's doing it. It's been done in time lapse, and uh, I think the one that she's most recently posted was done. It was supposed to be real time, I think, according to the title, but it was still f either two or four times. I think she it was alternated. Um, it was slowed down to two times at one point, but she's still an amazing artist, and uh, it's it's amazing how. Um, You know, she gets well, it's just perfect. It's it's she's amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah, that, that might just well, I say just try it, Eddie. You, you you know, next when you're doing some next time you try your airbrush, if you've just got a scrap bit of wood, just lay some down on it, you know, give it four or five hours to dry I, overnight, potentially, ideally, is best, and then. Um, and then just run your sharpie over it, and if it's if it's um, okay, then you don't have a problem. If it um, if it, if it's not, then watch it. Um, hopefully, you won't have any problems with um, with clear coat because it'll be a solvent. I, I imagine it'll be a um, a two two part clear coat that um, your father uses. I think he said our friend. Um, those tend to not affect things like sharpie and stuff like that. Um, it, sing, single, si, uh, single, um, single part, one part uh, clear coats. Sometimes will they, if it's a solvent base, it'll sometimes bring a solvent based marker, for example, it'll migrate into it a little bit, and it can go a bit fuzzy. Um, or so, uh, that's not from my experience. That's from me reading of other people's experiences. Because I've never, I've never actually had anything professionally clear coated. Yeah, I just don't want you to, 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 to go to all that trouble and then have it um, sort of melt on you, so to speak. <laughs> Uncle, okay. I, I recalled it was a, a, a relative, but I couldn't remember uh, quite what or quite who. Now, one thing I want to do here is to make sure I am light enough as I get up here. 
and I might need to darken the, the chest down a little bit. But I want to be um, light enough so that um, you don't lose the edge of the elephant from the background or into the background. Because I haven't got the, I don't have the luxury of the elephant being grey and the background being brown. Uh, they're both the same colour, and so you, you know, if I if I match, if I end up with exactly the same the same shade, at a particular point, you won't be able to distinguish it. If it's just a small area, like just around here, for example, or even just against here, your eye will naturally follow the existing lines through through the area where you can't distinguish the edge you, you'll actually see it even though it's not there so you know it's it's a little bit of a, a do it and see what happens um who's probably going to pop up in stream now but um you know that's just one of the things you have to bear in mind sometimes when doing things like i'm doing here putting this background in i've got to think yeah i want it to go lighter but not light enough to match some and not dark enough to hide something else and it can be interesting. Oh yeah, no, Eddie. But you, what I mean is, you know, you you will ideally don't want to sort of put your sharpie on it, and uh, and suddenly find that you you know it's caused the paint on the side of it to bubble, for example. So you've got to take it off and start again. <laughs> you've already started the game once. You don't want to be doing it again. It can get quite disheartening, can that? When I did, uh, when I did the, uh, uh, I've got, uh, I built a one one fourteen scale articulated truck, and um, the cab is plastic, and I I I washed that cab very very carefully in soapy water because um, one of the things you don't want anywhere near uh, airbrushing is silicon. You don't want silicon on things because silicon is non-stick basically uh, and you get that on something that you're airbrushing uh, whether it's solvent or whether it's uh, acrylic it won't it doesn't stick and it'll it will affect the uh, the work that you're doing in some way. Now I obviously hadn't cleaned them, cleaned it off properly. So some of the, the for plastic silicon is used as the mold release. I obviously hadn't cleaned it properly. The acrylic paint went down fine. In fact, the plastic a uh, plastic adhesion promoter, plastic undercoat, which is a grey, went down fine. Uh, a nice, lovely, bright red acrylic uh, water-based paint went down okay. But when I put the one part clear cut of the top it bubbled and it bubbled in only in certain areas and that was the uh, that was the silicon I actually had to take it off which is really quite hard um, and and clean it with isopropyl alcohol and do it again and and yet you know the 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 first coats had gone down um, without any problem it was the top coat that uh, you know, the, the clear coat that picked it up sometimes it, it's others but uh, and you can have mismatches in paint some some paints even acrylic paints don't like being with each other uh, so you know okay but you know starting anything again so <laughs> It's not so bad when you go, you know what, uh, I didn't do, didn't do a really bad, really good job on that, you know, I can do better, I'll start again for that. It's when you're forced to do it because of all the circumstances that it becomes. Because Murphy comes into that, you'll have done the best work you've ever done and then you're forced to do it again. <laughs> Yeah, so just go, going back to what uh, Graham mentioned earlier, uh, Gene Buick, if anybody's got any interest at all in, in pyrography and um, 
photographic style uh, pyrography. Uh, she is is well worth checking out. It's as I said, it's it's amazing work. I'd love to be able to get even a well. I'm I'm judging myself, but I'd love to be able to get even a tenth of as good as I perceive her to be. She has been doing it for years, so you know, um, it, you know, I, I am aware that it's you know she's got lots of practice, and I'm not, I don't expect to be as good as her overnight. Um, I'd love to be, but I don't expect it. I know it takes years of practice. Unfortunately, that's as with any um, uh, craftsman um, who um, can really do uh, their whatever their craft is. They make it look easy, and uh, it's very easy to get an expectation that um, if you're new to something or somebody's new to something, it's so easy to do that you could get perfect results. It's a testament to the the craftsman, but it's. Um, it sometimes can be really, uh, really challenging because other people expect you to be able to do it very simply as well. <laughs> yeah. Why can't you be as good as she is and that sort of thing you get. Uh... Oh, and by the way, in case anybody was thinking that you know, I was imitating my wife, that's not true. She thinks what I do is absolutely fantastic. Ah, thanks, Grya. Yeah. Okay, do have a good night. I think she's been doing it about 15 years. Well, last time I said so about 50, over 15 years, I think, uh, Grya. I think there's on, on at least somewhere on one of her videos there's some sort of indication as to how long it is. Or on one of the postings. Now one of the night, one of the odd things about pyrography um, is that uh, even when you've been over an area, if you go over it again, it gets darker. Uh, but it, it tends to do so reasonably consistently. Having said which, it just hasn't. But um, it tends to go uh, at a reasonably consistent rate. So. Like here, I can go over the elephant's skin and onto this area that I was trying to fill in, and the skin gets darker um, in in sort of the same ratio to to the area that I'm filling in, and and uh, you still maintain the line, so to speak, um, that was there before. Now, occasionally that doesn't happen, and and it it's reduced the contrast a little bit here. So I can, uh, whilst I can still see the line, it probably isn't showing up quite so well for you guys. You can sort of see it because it's darker. But um, it's it's, a, it's, a, it's gone a little bit fuzzy, is that, uh, that, that edge. So what I'm going to do is just uh, darken down the skin a little bit on that edge. If I can get the right angle on it, um, I 
I'm not going to go mad at this moment in time because I'll probably apply a little bit of texture maybe but I'll just do that that'll just remind me of the fact that I want to uh, now you can't see that as much as I can but it'll just remind me of the fact that I want to darken that down a little bit uh, now then uh, surprisingly there's quite a lot of um, area done there I spent a lot of time talking as well but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for tonight so we've been on stream what about two uh, two hours 20 minutes now so I've probably spent about an hour and a half at most uh, working on this with the amount of time I've been talking so I've just turned the pyro off so that's um, that's enough for tonight I think it's coming along quite nicely I think um, still you know still still got a fair bit of way to go main you know filling in large areas takes time and uh, creating a shading as I'm going to do will mean work going back over some of these areas again to just uh, ensure that I get a reasonable graduation I don't have to it doesn't have to be perfect you know this is a savannah there are changes in the uh, in the grass and uh, you know, there'll be some areas that don't have grass and things like that. So, I'm not I'm not looking for a perfect, you know, Photoshop graduation that you can't see. Um, I am looking for something that has a bit of character into it. Um, so, you know, yeah, that's the, it. Will look I think it will look better if I do that. And then I've got to put the grass uh, the grass in. And then we'll go back and once that's done, go back and finish the elephant. So we're getting we're getting closer um, to the to the edge. So what I'm going to do is my usual advert at this point. Uh, if there's anybody that's watching and not following, um, I would greatly encourage you to follow me, uh, and I'd really appreciate you doing that. Um, not least of which, it means you'll be uh, notified when I go live next, and therefore we'll be able to come back and uh, and watch me again. If you um, would just like uh, notifications you can follow me on twitter at zaraganart the details are also below the stream window uh, i tweet when i go live not when i eat my lunch so it will be <laughs> related to my channel and art when you see a tweet from me uh, otherwise if you just want to catch me next time i go live generally speaking i stream seven nights a week from 8 pm in the uk 1900 hours gmt or about two and a half hours ago in whatever time it is local to you now however there will not be a stream tomorrow night i have a family event tomorrow night i'm not going to be streaming i'm afraid sorry about that so my next stream is on wednesday night 8 pm in the uk 1900 hours gmt um so good night yeah good night uh, theme hospital good night Grya. um yeah thank you everybody i've greatly enjoyed having you around and chatting it uh, it's it stops me working a little bit but it actually keeps me working because um i, I enjoy showing you guys uh, my development of art as I get better. So thank you all for, for being around and I hope to see you on a future stream. Bye-bye.